my compadre from the NFL Media Group, a man who I have known for quite some time, 15 seasons in the National Football League, fourth overall pick in the 1994 draft out of USC, three-time Super Bowl champion in my Fellow NFL networker, good to see you, Willie McGinnis. What's up, Rick? How are you? I am great. All right, let's uh, let's jump right into this Josh Gordon trade. What would you think of it? <sighs> oh, I, I thought I, I no, gotta, okay. no, I I did think this when when they said they were going to release Josh Gordon, I, I thought of a few teams. Dallas was one, and the Patriots was the other one because the of the environment and because of their culture and the resources they would put around this young man. Um, the upside is we already know what that is if he's on the field. Um, if he's being accountable, if he's handling his business. And if it doesn't work out, they've been here before, you know, with a couple of players, Ocho Cinco, Haynesworth, um, a fifth-round pick. So I was saying, like, for the Patriots, they're thin. They wouldn't make this move if they, if they didn't need to. They're thin. Um, this is not something short-term. This is something I think is going to help them long-term. Um, I don't think they need to rush him in. They'll get Edelman back soon. But after playing against the Jaguars, they noticed, hey, we do need a little more firepower. And we can bring a guy like this in. And if we can get him to conform to our culture and what we do here, I think it'll be extraordinary. It's Honda Insider Report here with William McGinnis. You're the perfect guest for this sort of thing. So what happens when Josh Gordon gets acquired? Walk me through how they're going to initiate him in the do-your-job way. Do well, think? first of all, I think he's going to have a conversation with, with Bill Belichick in ownership. And they're going, to, you know, they're going to have to be pretty raw and uncut with him and him with them as well. And I think with Kraft and the Kraft family, they have resources outside of the uniforms for him. You know, outside of a football player. Because I think it starts with his life first. He got to make sure his life is in order and he's making the right decisions. You don't think they did their due diligence on I that think they before have. the trade? I, I definitely think they have, but it's still up to the individuals. Josh has to want it. They could do everything possible and put everything around him, all the resources and everything around this young man. But I think at the end of the day, he has to make the right decisions and buy in 100% as well. Well, I mean, if, if he does believe in a higher power... Josh Gordon, right? then he's got to realize that higher power has placed an <laughs> incredible, incredible change of opportunity and potentially fortune for him because yeah. this is it, right? I mean, if he goes to New England, he has an opportunity to win championships and gain whatever he might have lost um, financially, right. reputationally, back instantly. No, no question. And if he doesn't succeed here, then what is he giving as a message to the rest of the National Football League? Right, and I think the the message here is if you can't get it right there, <laughs> where else are you going to get it right? And I think this is a great opportunity, like you mentioned, Rich. And you know, it it, it it's going to take some work, and I think he can help a lot of football teams across the league. Um, but it has to be the right environment. It has to be the right locker room. It has to be the right support system. I think the players understand that. And, you know, I know Rob uh, Nikovich came out and was like, this, what kind of message is this to the other players? Well, if I was in that locker room, I would be excited. And it's not a teammate, it's a family member now. And that's how we treated everything in New England as family. Um, it wasn't just about football, and I think that's what made us so close as a unit. And I think a guy like Tom and guys on this offense and on the other side of the ball, the, the good personalities and characters they have in that locker room will come together and wrapped their, around, their hands around this young man. And sometimes, Rich, you need a fresh start. You need to be in a different environment. Cleveland did a, a, a great job, I would say, with trying with Josh Gordon. It didn't work there. This is another great opportunity for him. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I think if he wants it, it's going to happen, and it's going to be – I'm not going to compare it to Randy Moss because that was special and unique, but I think he's going to have the same type of impact. Well, in terms of, you know, the – comparison to Randy Moss let's get into the football aspect of this right uh, here in the Honda Insider Report with Willie McGinnis and I'm 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 kind of hesitantly broaching this subject because <laughs> football may turn out to be insignificant because right. of all the other aspects right. of Josh Gordon's life that potentially might right prove that he's not ready for football get in okay the way. so but for the moment let's assume that he is ready for football right. and he's ready to play football and the question is, is how does it work? How does he 
function in a Patriots offense knowing his game? Does it work? Do I think, think it works absolutely. I How think, so? I think Josh McDaniels will give him a, a game plan. They will create a game plan for him for the time being. He will learn certain plays and get him in – get him familiar with the playbook, and, and he has to learn Brady. They got to be on the same page. He has to learn how the adjustments work and all those different nuances with the playbook. It changes from week to week there. That's the tough part. They don't have just one system that they throw out there every single week. So first of all, he has to learn the foundation of the offense, and they'll feed it to him slow. Like I said, they're not going to rush this. This is long term. This is playoffs. This is midseason. You know, this is – us competing for an AFC championship, possibly on the road. You need that firepower. So I would say once he learns the system and they get him going, they'll feed him slowly and they'll just build up. If, if, if I'm thinking about this the right way, they'll build him up till he becomes uh, comfortable in the system. And once he gets going, I think that offense would be unstoppable. Just think. You know, you got Edelman, you got Hogan, you got the running backs, you got Gronk, you got Josh Gordon. If everybody's on the same page... That's tough. That's and, tough to reckon with. And and we all know uh, schematically they know how to create a matchup problem for you. No and if, problem. And if somehow schematically that matchup problem doesn't exist pre-snap, the GOAT will make sure it does once the ball is snapped. Right. I mean, it, it really is a frightening concept when you, <laughs> when you think about it football-wise. What about the idea you're seeing out there that he's not a precise enough route runner for Brady? I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I, I, I've seen him take over games. I've seen him come back in, in six to eight weeks and in, in 1,400 yards and play at a certain level. I think within this system, you do have to be disciplined and you do have to be disciplined in your route running and everything else. I think he'll, he'll be that. And they'll put the pressure on him for that. And I think he wants that. You know, I think he has a quarterback that he'll come in and respect right away. He'll respect Josh McDaniels. It's proven, like you mentioned, over a couple of decades of seeing this, why would you go against the grain? So it's going to take some for him to learn and for him to play at a certain level and to make sure what he's doing is, is, is going to be on the same page. But I don't think his route running is going to be an issue. He's closer to being in his prime than he is towards the end of his career. If, if, I mean, he's, you know, he's that's played, my opinion. He's played 11 games since right. his 2013 season right. where he had a breakout on-field season but we also the reason why he's played only 11 games is he admitted he was drunk or he was right. not sober every single game day right so but again let's just a couple more here on the football question with Willie McGinnis here Brady do you think he was asked about the trade prior to absolutely him? absolutely I think him and Belichick and, and Josh are all on the same page and you so know they make decisions just, he collectively he didn't just learn about it 10 minutes before talking to no, Jim Bray on the radio nah, last night. okay I don't I don't think I don't I, I, so then, I don't think so I mean I'm I think like they, they do a lot of things collectively, and I, he's an important part to that. And I think that if, to exist in that offense and on that team, especially on the offensive side of the ball, um, Brady has to be on board. And, and I know Belichick, they have those type of conversations. Um, nobody's hitting anybody with any big surprises. Now, why was, can walk me through, this is the ultimate insider. Why was Brady and McDaniels barking like they were after some of the offensive sets in Jacksonville? Over Family barks, man. No, I know that. They but bark. What, they get into what? it. About what? Well, when you're not when you're not executing the way you want to execute, when plays are being missed, uh, when things are not happening the way you want it to, you get you get a little emotional. We, it's not the first time. No, I'm We've not seen saying Billy it's bad. O I'm just like, what brought it about, and is that what? Because again, well, what when we you, saw in Jacksonville week right. two, part of this is what I, we're, it's all interconnected. What I've just brought up. The result in week two, right. the trade for Josh Gordon. Right. How does this all affect you? Saying you that he, he felt like he didn't have enough, so that well, was I'm that just part of the bargain. Does it all work together? That you said that they saw what happened, Belichick saw what happened in week two in Jacksonville. We I was just saying from a, I was saying from a football mind to be able to exploit a defense like that. That's the type of defense you're going to see in the playoffs. I mean, no question, right? We we all expect Jack, Jacksonville to be there. I, I, so I in order to exploit that defense and make plays, you got to have playmakers. And you got to have guys making plays. They figured out how to take Gronk out of that game. They figured out how to take James White or limit James White in that game. Yes. So good defensive of minds do that. They take away your number one threats and they want everybody else to beat you. So in seeing that, you don't have an Edelman. Right, he's not there. Philip Dorsett is new to the system. He's finding his way. Mm -hmm. But if you add a Josh Gordon to that, and I'm not saying Brady was on the sideline 
uh, give me being, Gordon. Yeah, being disgruntled <laughs> about giving me Gordon. Right. I'm saying it wasn't no. executing right. the offense the way they needed to be, and it wasn't working. So you get frustrated. We've seen that with Billy O'Brien and Brady before. Sure. You know. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that. You know, I'm. I'm not saying. Why right, you saying like I need more? Give me Josh Gordon. I want I to you. know what was not firing in that game and how does it manifest itself in terms right. of the Patriots' ability to get back to the Super Bowl? Well, I would say when you're not executing and you're not making plays and things are not working, right. a lot had to do with Jacksonville. <laughs> okay, They're that good, right? Yeah, they were really that good. A lot had to do with Jacksonville. I'm not taking anything away from them. They came out and they balled. They executed. They did exactly what they needed to do on both sides of the ball yeah. to win that game at home. And when you get down – which the Patriots knew that going in. You get down, mm -hmm. it's tough to climb your way back out. And you get frustrated. I heard Brady saying what he was saying, do your job. Like there was a lot of barking going on. Yeah. So things He's pointing were pointing to his head. Yeah, things were breaking down. Yeah. Be smart. Do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. A lot of things were breaking down. So we all get frustrated and do that. So what's your best guess as we wrap up this Honda Insider Report? And uh, we're gonna uh, I guess, you're going to stick around, by the way, for Von Miller. You'll help me interview him, and it'll sure. be a great one. That's coming up. But uh, uh, ball of wax this one for me, bottom line, what happens my, here? My best guess is it's week two. The Patriots have lost or lost games early in the season. Mm -hmm. They will make adjustments. Um, this addition with Josh Gordon would definitely help if he if he fits in all the way around like we talked about. We have no idea what what's right. We have no idea. Outside of that, Julian Edelman be back. They'll make adge adjustments, and this offense will look different in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, and in terms of Gordon, I think the comparisons to Randy Moss, I mean, I don't think anybody thinks that he's going to get a gold jacket No, but they day. were saying Randy Moss 2.0. A lot of people well, were comparing a, he, the talent level. Well, you tell me, who, who's the most fit? You tell me Brady's most physical outside the numbers threat, not named no, Gronk, no. Okay, no, at right. the receiver position no, right. that he has had. Outside the numbers. See, that was key. I, 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 got, I caught that. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm parsing it the way. It, yeah, outside the numbers right. threat. Physical for right. Tom Brady since well, Randy you Moss. You can't compare a lot of people to Randy Moss, and Josh Gordon would probably be that guy as far as stature, I think that's why the size, compare. speed, strength, all those different right. things you talked about. The Honda Insider Report is always brought to you <laughs> by our friends at Honda. The Honda Accord, whether you're headed to the stadium or just running out for snacks, the Accord gets you there in comfort, and it gets you there in style. With a sophisticated redesign and high-tech features like standard Honda sensing, the Accord is the most impressive Honda ever. We're going to take a break. We'll come back, Willie. I want to talk with you about Khalil Mack and, the, and what we saw last night and what you took out of that game oh, yeah. between the Bears and the Seahawks. The uh, roughing the passer penalty on Clay Matthews, the NFL doubling down saying not only was that a proper call that they're putting it on <laughs> tape to show to teams what not to do <laughs> and what they will call. And then uh, Von Miller will call and we'll have you part of that. All right. That's Willie McGinnis here on the Rich Eisen Show when we come back. The poll question, uh, Chris Brockman, get ready to tee that up. Brought to you by our friends at True Car with terms like dealer price, list price, and invoice. True Car shows you what other people paid for the car you want. You can recognize a good price when you're ready to buy new or used. Visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Chris, please ask it of three time Super Bowl champion Willie McGinnis, who's still here in studio with us, getting set to take the phone call of Von Miller to interview him here on the show. What do you have over there, Chris? All right, Willie, which winless team is in the most trouble? Winless team. Giants, Raiders, Seahawks, Steelers, Texans. Raiders. Sure. You didn't stutter. No. Why? Because every every week after the interview, they talk about the defense, and they can't get pass rush. They can't get to running backs and all these different things. You knew that going in. And I know Paul Gunther was a good addition, but he's not making adjustments. And when I broke down the tape, um, you've got to find other creative ways. And I'm, I'm going to – like the the – the Khalil Mack thing is over, okay? He's not coming back, so we can stop talking about that. But if you don't have a dominant guy like that up front, you got to find other ways to create pressure and get to the quarterback if that's what's happening. And when you're up 13-0 against the Denver Broncos, the game should be over if you got a solid defense. And it just, you know, you give up these big leagues, you can't stop anybody, you can't get to the quarterback. Um, you got to make an adjustment. And I know sometimes coordinators get a little stubborn in their system, but the great teams make adjustments and find other ways. And when you look at John Gruden, you know they're going to score points. You know They got playmakers on that side of the ball. He's frustrated, and he's saying, again, we can't do this and we can't do this defensively. That's a direct message to the, to the defensive coordinator. You got to find – you got to do – you got to change it up.
Hmm. And they are also two games behind our guest, Von Miller, that's calling in shortly yeah. here on the show, and also Kansas City, who looks so loaded on offense. It's absurd. The Chargers are looking pretty good, that's too. That's true. That's I true. Mean, it's a very difficult division. Last place in that division. Chargers and Rams uh, coming up this weekend as well. It'll be a lot of fun here in Los Angeles. Yeah. What do you think of Khalil Mack looking in that Chicago Bears uniform last he night? He is man? what he is. He is what we all expected. I mean, he's a beast. He he fits that mantra of that Chicago Bear, right? When he when I first saw him in the jersey, I was like, that fits him so perfect. Not not that he didn't look good in the sure. Raiders no, I understand. uniform, too, but... Um, you know, he's going to a system that they were already a solid defense before he got there. They were a top team in, in sacks last year. And when you add him and, and Vic Vangio's system and what he's going to be able to do, a lot of people say, well, was he, is he going to be able to make the transition? He doesn't drop into coverage. He's not a linebacker. He's a defensive end now. And I know he's made all pro in both positions, but he's going to be a defensive end. They're going to use him. They're going to game plan and, and put him in those stunts and games and let him do what he does. And – I was just about. To I was s- excited, man, I, watching him. I was just about to say that um, <laughs> that uh, he wants to be a defensive end just in case he gets franchise tag. But we also <laughs> know he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He no. has been paid. Yes. The Steelers, though, are an interesting choice on that poll question. They one are. oh one and one. Brown didn't show up for work yesterday. We're trying to find out why. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell. What in the world is the answer there in Pittsburgh, Willie? I think. For the the Bell situation, it's it's pretty much far gone. I think he knows he's not going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler next year. There is no deal in place. They're not going to franchise him again. Uh, it didn't work out. So now I think, far as Bell's mindset and his agents and his you know his his group is preservation of body. I'm going to preserve my body for the next team. They know once he reports that uh, they're going to ride him to the wheels fall off in every aspect of the game. He understands that. So the, the the more weeks that he's not there, it takes reps off of him in practice. It takes reps off of him in games. And I know that's probably a selfish approach, but he's like, they didn't invest in me, so I'm going to save my talents and my body for the next team that, you know, that I'm going to be playing for because they will invest in me. So, so what if the Steelers th- threw a few million bucks on top of his tender? He would say no to something? Like I don't that? know if they can do that. I they think can do I, that. They well, can do that. They can basically well, say to him, see, like, we'll make you the highest paid player in the game for this year, 2018. That's, that's great, but there's no long term. The problem with his contract and why he's not there, because they did throw a nice deal at him, but the guaranteed money was not there over no, the course know. of a number of years. So with him as a running back, he's looking at, Gurley signing, you know, David Johnson, he knows that pretty much before those guys sign that the number he's at at his franchise tag is he set the market. But they've got a, to me in Pittsburgh, and again, they it's, don't do long term guarantee deals. I know, deals. but for me, I guess it's easy to say sitting from this chair right. here at the Rich Eisen chair, <laughs> waiting for Von Miller to call in shortly, that you look at where you're standing right now with Le'Veon Bell there and Antonio Brown there right. and bend there right you only got one more year of it that's it figure out a way to get levy on bell in now figure it out but unless what's, what's i don't know i i don't know what it is it's it's just throw throw them an, an, an amount of money and then when people will say then why just screw with them and we tried we figured it out we want them happy we think we can win the super bowl this year i have a question for because you, our though. defense isn't very good they won't say that publicly right. there you go and then if the next person comes at them and says, well, you did it for Bell, you could say, well, you're not levying on Bell. Uh, again, I know it's easy for me to say because the way that they're going about it right now, their defense isn't all that good. They need Bell to go point for point. They need to get up 28 nothing so the defense doesn't have to think that they're playing downhill all the time, is, right? Is, is Bell the problem or is the defense the problem? A defense is definitely a problem. Right, so they're scoring points. So what, you're just going to... No, gonna... no, no, I'm not saying that. They're scoring points. And I think James Conner, let's not overlook the fact that he's been playing unbelievable. He is, but he's, you're not going to split him out wide. No, he's different. He is different, but they don't have him. So if I'm looking at the problem is the bigger picture right now, is it Bell not being there? They could probably, okay, let's just say he accounts for 10 more points with the offense. They're still not stopping anybody. I mean, they gave up 42 points or whatever the number is to Kansas City. It wasn't even close. Well, it's not just the Steelers either. I mean, I'm looking at these uh, totals through week two. 65 total passing touchdowns That uh, in week two. That was the most in three years. 102.6 combined passer rating in week two. That's the highest right. in 
eight years. Um, we're seeing an absurd amount of points go on right now. <laughs> Kurt Warner, Trent Dilfer was on the show yesterday are saying it's the rules that, that, that are out there. It's not a fair fight, offense and defense. And then we see what happened with Clay Matthews this past I, I weekend. What do, you, what, what do you think of that call and the NFL's decision to I didn't like the double call. down on it? I didn't like the call, but I understand what they're trying to do. And, and and with any 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 rule, any rule change, any anything that's incorporated into the league, they're gonna make mistakes and it's gonna take some time to work out the kinks, I would say. And I know that these referees watch tape, I know they get graded, and I know they review all these play calls. This was significant because it changed the, pretty much the outcome of the game. It did. It did. And when I watched this play, okay, you could have probably got Clay a week ago with the call that they got him with, yeah. I, I would say no argument for me there. I think he did hit. Right. He did. He, 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 the hit on Trubisky, I think. Right. Okay, that's fine. He admits to that. You got, you got that one. Right. But this one this week, obviously you could tell he was conscious when he was going down. I saw him extend the hand, and not put the shoulder in him, but to actually put the weight on the side of the quarterback. Right. And – at the end of the day, you see the hand go right there. Yeah. That shoulder could have been going into the quarterback. Yeah, his, left, his left hand, he used it to make sure that right. his full body weight did not land exactly. on top of the quarterback. So he was conscious of the fact that what he was doing. You you can't just pillow lay these guys down. Um, you, gotta, uh, you, you, you can't take away the football aspect of some of these plays. And I get it. We're trying to protect the quarterback position. And, you know, unfortunately – his teammate is the one who created this role. From Anthony Barr hit on you know. on, on Rodgers last year. Uh, but the referees have got to do a better job in this instance to maybe come together. Let's huddle up after this play and make sure we got the right call. But they didn't – They the league says they got the right call. And according to, again, all reports, is I that this is going to be not only – uh, I don't agree with this one, but I get this, what they're trying this, to this do. This is going to be put on a video being sent to all teams saying this is the way we're going to call it. And 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 the left arm that you were pointing out about Clay Matthews, that it looked like he was doing a one-handed push-up, well, right? He like he made pressure, sure yeah. he took the pressure off of Kirk right. Cousins. That arm was visible to Tony Correnti, right. who might have been looking at the feet, watching the feet fly up in the air in what looked like to be potentially an unnatural being picked up motion, but it's because Kirk Cousins was moving forward as – as right. Clay Matthews was hitting him, the problem for me is is the NFL seems to be creating moments where we're penalizing players for hitting quarterbacks that aren't being physically harmed by the hit. Right. Right. To me, I know they don't want it to get to the part where they get physically harmed, right. and they're trying to prevent that. And I get that, but still, a good football play you got to let stand, and it shouldn't be penalized. And I thought, in my opinion. That was a good football play. I agree with you. And um, and it, what it does is it does, football-wise, set up uh, the next Vikings-Packers game for being the tie break. Because yeah. there's a tie. Whoever wins the Week 12 game in Minnesota might win that division. You know what else it does, though, Rich? When you look at some of these plays, you'll get defenders that'll come in and they'll be tentative of how they hit. Mm -hmm. Quarterbacks will be, uh, break tackles and they go on and make a great play down the field and – those defenders will get yelled at and they'll get criticized in meetings and they'll go back to what they normally do is finish the play. That's what we're taught, finish the play. Finish it the right way, though, without trying to do the extras, the power driving and all that. I definitely agree 1,000%. But you'll get guys being overly cautious and it'll create plays for the offense now because guys are thinking about that. Before I let you go, Willie, uh, do you want to talk USC football or are we out of time? No, we can. I got plenty of time. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I think we got to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to get it together, man. There's and, a you know, lot of unhappy people in this town right now. It is, man. It is. And, you know, um, I've been saying this for the last couple of years. We got to get better in the trenches. We got to be able to win the trenches. And when you and when you talk, it's not just enough to play in the Rose Bowl and, and to win games and, and have a winning record. Um the expectations for USC is to be in the playoffs and be competing for national championships. And, you know, everybody that's there, I, I support, man. I, I don't want to be negative or, you know, say anything, but we've got to get together. We got to play at another level. When we go in and play these really good teams, we got to compete and we got to step our game up and we got to coach better. We got to play better all the way around. Oh, you sound like Belichick right no, now. No, I'm just do saying, like, we, we do. 
I mean, we no, do. No. But my um, coordinating producer, Don Bowie, who's a, uh, a big Trojan, okay, mm -hmm. he asked me a question in my ear twice while you were going on your uh, soliloquy there. Okay. I will ask it. Is Clay Helton the guy for the job there? Uh, he's the guy right now. He's their coach. You know, I, I, I'm not involved in the decision making. I know that. And I try not to be critical. Um, but Without being critical. Any coach yes. in any high-profile job, when you don't win and perform at a certain level, there's pressure. There's pressure. I don't care who you are. There's pressure. So, you know, I don't know what that means, like I said. But I support my Trojans. I support the coaching staff as long as everybody's there. We've got to do a better job. And the only way to fight your way out of that and eliminate all those questions is to win in the big game. Win football games. Yep. Are you on Total Access tonight? No, I am not. You tomorrow. Are, tomorrow night. Yes. On NFL Network. I felt like we were on to uh, back on my Total Access days with you sitting here and me we interviewing fun, Von man. Miller. That was a lot of fun. Great to see you, Willie. Let's do this on the regular, Anytime. okay? At Willie McGinnis on Twitter to follow Willie McGinnis. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.